Greetings friends, the story will be about the psychological thriller 2022, Nocebo, keep your eyes open and stay focused. A young girl, Christine, is the lucky owner of a beautiful husband, Felix, and a lovely daughter, Bob's. Her amazing job as a fashion designer is on its way up the career ladder as she is already launching her first shows. But today she got a strange phone call and an unknown voice whispered horrors to her, but the girl said she couldn't listen to it anymore and disconnected from the call. As she immediately noticed a living dog dead man behind the curtain who started throwing pincers at the girl. It turned out to be a simple vision, but one of the ticks stayed on the girl. After a while, the girl wakes up in a cold sweat from terrifying nightmares, you can clearly tell from her medicine kit that she is trying to heal, but the redness on her neck from the tick still remains. Christine sends her daughter off to school, while she returns to get ready for an important interview with the director of one of the companies. And right in the dialogue with her, the woman belittles Christine's praise, which causes her to shake, but the woman reports that the work is amazing. Christine returns to the car and asks her husband to take Bob's away because of her shaking. When she gets home, director Liz dials her on the phone and tells her they are ready to cooperate but the costumes will need adjustments. The girl is delighted, but a spoon falls in her house and a doorbell unexpectedly rings. It turns out to be a strange girl Diana, who convinces her that she came to help. Christine unfortunately does not remember it, but lets the new helper into the house. The girls prepare a room together for Diana and when Christine leaves, the girl pulls out a picture we don't know about from her toolkit and looks at it. And when the girls on different floors decide to rest, they see their childbirth going on, and then Diane notices a mite and whispers something to get him into the box. Felix and Bob's return home and meet their new helper. She immediately offers to cook dinner, but picks up the ashes from the fireplace herself. And accidentally she finds a vent through which she peeks at the couple's quarrel that Christine has invited an unknown person into the house, so her husband lets her stay here for a week at most. Diane immediately set out to cook the meal and poured seasonings from her sack, so at dinner the whole family was delighted with the flavor. Her tricks didn't end there. When Christine got pains in her shoulder, Diana managed to take away her pains as if by the power of her thoughts and tickling. When her father takes Bob's to bed, she sees the same dog as her mother, but then Diana appears in her place. When Felix manages to put his daughter to bed, he returns to Christine, and before they go to sleep, Diana enters who utters a phrase in an unknown language and leaves them alone. And she herself sneaks into the workshop and sees the tags on Tyka's clothes, but when she notices a newspaper clipping with the girl, she only leaves us with questions with her gestures. In the middle of the night, Diana comes out of her bedroom and spreads a newspaper with ashes under the door and whispers in bed that she will always be there. And she dreams of her past years partying with a man in a club. In the morning, Bob's is about to eavesdrop on the new family member, but when he notices the ashes at the door with the footprints, he runs right out, and immediately Diana comes out and wraps him back in. A little later she decides to bring breakfast to the couple's bed, Christine thanks her of course, but asks her not to come into the bedroom again, she wonders who is helping her sew clothes, and she replies that it is too early to ask them questions. The next thing Kristen does is to show Diane the way to school, but in the car her daughter confesses that she saw footprints at Diana's door, small ones like hers but not hers, and then Diane comes in. On the road trip, Kristen gets sick and it turns out she has forgotten her way to school, so Diane suggests walking. And when they arrive, her mother says her daughter will be picked up by Diana and is about to call a cab, but she also can't remember his number and Diana promises to help her, but not by tickling her anymore. At home, she performs an element of traditional medicine with smoke and a jar that will show how clean her head is. And after going through the session, the water does indeed become clear. Christine wonders where she got her knowledge, but Diane replies that it is not knowledge but a gift. She tells the story of a dying Umu who once came to their house, Umu have tremendous power, so they can cure or kill, so they should not be approached when they are dying because the spirit moves into another person. But she approached her and got her gift which her parents began to sell to other sick people, but they were still afraid of her because she could destroy them. Christine is very grateful for her treatment, for she is much better, but that same evening Diana overhears the family talking again. Felix thinks it is an illusion and Diana should be fired. In the morning, Diane listens to the pincer knocks from the box and places it on her altar, which a little later turns out to have a picture of her daughter, but Christine arrives and asks for Diane's help. 
She gives a paper with her problems and Diane reads them aloud, and Christine adds that she had a vision of the dog whose tick had bitten her. The girl immediately agrees to help with healing mud, but she does not touch the bite side itself, and then collects blood from her fingers. Deep into the night, Bob sleeps a sweet sleep, but wakes up and sees Diana hovering in the window, who then disappears. In the morning, of course, the daughter tells her father about it, but the father thinks the daughter was dreaming. Diana, meanwhile, brushes Christine's hair and collects her hair, with which she performs a ritual during the night. Again we are shown fragments of her past when robbers drove them out of the village so they had to live with her husband and daughter in the slums. In the morning, Christine notices the medicine is missing and asks for help finding it, but Diana says the landlady asked her to throw it out. Christine thinks it is a new memory lapse, but Felix says she hasn't had any failures, she immediately aggresses on him and the man notices a strange connection between the girls. Diane takes Bobs to school and notices that the girl is being bullied, at which time Christine hears her daughter's voice, but a hole is found under the table where a fire has started and the room is filled with smoke. Christine begged for help and when Felix arrived, there was no more smoke. At night, while Christine was sleeping, Felix decides to talk to Diane about how Christine has a problem in her head and doesn't need any treatment. But the girl convinces him that they should talk in the morning and takes him out of the room. In the hallway he is attacked by a parrot, which he hits and dies, and moments later a tick crawls out of him. Felix buries him properly and Bob's and Diana come to the wake. The girl apologized for the past and offered to be girlfriends, and she now considers her father a murderer. Diane continued her rituals and after that Christine felt terrible and began to see burnt bodies and then Diane began to calm her down and Christine immediately went to the school to get Bob's. And the next day she went to the agency and Diane told Bob's to skip school and teach her something new. At this time Felix decided to find out more about Diana and found her altar photo, and a jar that had rolled away under the bed revealed an unknown package for him. Christine is already excited about the new peaks Lisa tells her about, and Diana shows the girl her uncanny talent for communicating with birds. Christine returns home in great spirits, but Felix is waiting for her at the table with a bag of her medicine. Diana follows home and convinces the Bobs that her mother will forgive them, but at home her mother doesn't think so, they realize that Diana has manipulated them and asks them to give her keys and pack up their things. But Diana won't leave so easily, she lets a sinister tick into the vent and goes in to say goodbye to Bobs. But the girl doesn't want to lose her new friend, so she agrees to do what Diana asks. The housekeeper leaves their house and Christine exhales with relief. We are again shown footage of Diana saying goodbye to her husband and promising that he will hear from her again one day. Christine is seized by sleep paralysis, in which a huge tick swoops down on her, but Felix manages to wake her up. So she turned on the light and the tick ended up on Felix's face, she woke up again, but the tick was still crawling toward her and the same dog was watching. After waking up in the morning, Felix went to work and Christine found blood on her neck. When she and her daughter went out to check on the parrot, the girl told him that daddy had the pills and he was lying, so Christine made a scandal at home because she was no longer going to trust her husband. So he humbly decided to go up to the other room, but a bird attacked him and he fell down the stairs and was hospitalized. Christine decided to take her mind off the incidents and took Bob's to the shooting, but Diane was already working even remotely at the time, so Christine began to think that everyone around her was infected with ticks, and her staff would now definitely think she was crazy. At home, Bob's inquires about her mother's condition, but she asks her to leave and Bob's opens the door to, guess who? Of course Diane. She comes back to finish what she started. In her past, Diana worked in an underground clothing factory where she tried to earn at least some food and she sewed Bryn named Tyka's clothes, which means she sewed Christine's clothes. In the present day, Diane makes her eat ashes to make her remember who she was and we are shown the other side of Christine, the cruel one who had come to this underground production facility and make the women sew 30 shirts an hour and lock all the doors so that no goods would go missing. And when she noticed Diana's daughter, Anina, under the table, she decided to take a picture with her and praise Diana for her work. But now it's the opposite, Diana is literally torturing Christine to sew clothes without giving her a rest or even a drink. Because the main reason was that one day at work Diana asked to go out to get her daughter's water, and while she was at the market, the boss as usual decided to fix the fan and just today it shorted out and there was a fire, and because the doors were locked, all the people inside were burned alive. And Christine continued to sew even while vomiting blood and sitting in the fire. In this way, Diana decided to avenge Christine for all her torment. 
Diana returns to Bob's and says goodbye, but the girl says she has promised to always be with her, but the girl asks Bob's to go into the garden and look up. At this time Felix returns home and in the backyard, Diana jumps off the roof and as she bleeds out, Bob's approaches her and Uma moves into her body. And Felix finds his wife's body burned to a crisp. And then we go back in time to when Diana returned home after the fire and said goodbye to her husband and vanished into thin air and left her footprints in the ashes. And Bob's went off into the woods to gather natural resources, just as Diana did when Uma was possessed and Diana herself watched her between the trees, keeping her promise and staying with Bob's forever. Please support the channel with likes, subscribing and comments, it is the most valuable thing you can give. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I won't say goodbye.